right, folks, this is all the fruit. And here I have the laurel cherry, which is also commonly being known as the cherry laurel, but this name is wrong. It's definitely a cherry, not a laurel. It's a prudus species, prudus laurocerasus, with leaves which resemble, kind of resemble laurel leaves. It's in the rosacea. Well, if it was a laurel, it would be the genus Laurus in the Laurasi. So, it's not the cherry laurel, it's the laurel cherry. If you have any doubt about it, look at the fruit. They are typical cherry fruit. Well, they don't look so much like our Prudus avium, like the cherries you usually have in your garden, but they look a lot like Prudus parus or Prudus virginiana or Prudus serotina, which also have fruits and racems. So the laurel cherry, Prudus laurocerasus, it grows around the Black Sea. It grows in the Caucasus Mountains, it grows in the Balkans, and despite being evergreen, it seems to grow to pretty high elevations. Well, in the Caucasus Mountains, it seems it grows in mild areas up to 2,000 meters. In the Balkans, I've seen it at almost 1,500 meters. And the funny thing is, while it grows quite well in mild parts of Germany, and since the climate change, even in uh, parts of Germany with more rough climate, until about the year 2000, there were no records of it actually escaping into the wild. No records of feral Prudus laurocerasus, despite it growing in its home range in mountains up to 2,000 meters. It's quite strange. So maybe this is some mild genotype from some coastal area which uh, couldn't survive as well as some genotype from some higher mountains would survive. Also, the strange thing is here in Germany, it usually grows as a hedge or as a shrub. There are a couple pretty old trees uh, here in Heidelberg. There are some, well, old giant shrubs in Heidelberg, like there are a lot in the uh, area with old hospitals built in the 1920s. There are a couple old big bushes, which must be almost a hundred years old now. And at the Jewish cemetery of Heidelberg, there is a giant bush which is with stems almost as thick as me. But they all grow as bushes. Well, I read that in the Caucasus, there are actually plants, trees of the laurel cherry with stems up to 20 meters, which are being used like other cherry wood. They are used for timber. Here, even the oldest plants, which must be much older than yeah, must be over a hundred years old to the Jewish cemetery. You could use it for timber, but it wouldn't really replace cherry timber because it's just a giant bush with crooked stems. Another interesting thing which interests us more are, of course, the fruit. Those are cherries. But in all the older books here in Germany, it says that they are toxic. One of those fruit which you should never eat. They are just for the birds. In one of the older books I read that in the Caucasus actually there is a cultivar which has been selected for its edible fruit, but that you are not supposed to eat all the other laurel cherries. But in more recent publications it said no, actually they are edible when fully ripe. So this is one of those fruit where, well, you are not completely sure if it's toxic or not. So my suggestion is... If you want to be on the same side, don't eat it. If you are very curious, maybe eat a fruit or two when they are really ripe, but don't stuff yourself with like a pound or a kilogram of those cherries. Even if they are not toxic, they might kind of irritate your stomach. So let's try them. Hmm. Not too bad. Hmm. That's what the seeds look like. Well, how shall I describe them? The flesh is chewy. They are 
pretty ripe they are definitely ripe but the flesh is more firm than in most cherry species I've encountered when fully ripe come on focus yeah the flesh is more firm yeah it's pale purplish Actually, I, I think that most of the coloration of the flesh comes from right underneath the skin. As you can see, the... Uh, come on. The inner part of the flesh around the seat is almost colorless, but underneath the skin, the flesh is quite purplish. That's what also coloring my fingers here. Yeah, quite chewy. A little bit sweet. Hmm. A little bit tart, but not too tart. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Here I have a less ripe fruit, which is more tart. The ripe ones are pretty sweet. With just a hint of tartness. And the flavor quite similar to Prunus serotina, but not that strong. As you can see, the flesh seems to oxidize very quickly. Here are two seeds I spit out over a minute ago, maybe two minutes ago, and here one I spit out 20 seconds ago. The two older seeds are already discolored. Hmm. Let's try some from a different race. Mm -hmm. Funny, some of them disattach without this little peduncle, some with it. Hmm. Hmm. This one is pretty chewy. Mm. Let's look at those. So maybe this one, which is already a little bit shriveled up. Hmm. 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 Well, I think that there is no chance this is going to become my. favorite cherry. It's neither as sweet nor as juicy as other cherry species and especially cherry cultivars we have here. But it's the only cherry ripe at this time. All the Prudusavium uh, cultivars and Prudus cerasus cultivars are long gone. Also stuff like Prudus padus and Prudus virginiana and so on, already gone. Prunus serotina is not ripe yet, so around this time of year, there seems to be pretty much the only cherry available. Yeah, it's not going to become a staple food of mine, but definitely another little fruit you can nibble while in one of the numerous German city parks. Okay, folks, this was the laurel cherry, not the cherry laurel. Latin name is uh, Prunus laurocerasus of the genus Rose uh, in the family Rosaceae. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the parks and gardens of Germany. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.